Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. You probably noticed there's snow outside. I kind of want to whine about it, but I told somebody I've got a lot of friends and relatives in Minnesota, so I don't think I have whining rights on a few snow <laughs> flakes. And speaking of Minnesota, Pastor Gina made it to Minnesota safely, so she texted me a couple days ago, so that's an answer to prayer. I'm glad she's up there safely. I imagine some of you have friends and relatives in the path of the storm, and so we will certainly remember them in prayer this morning. Um, a few other announcements to lift up. I should introduce myself. I think most of you know me. I'm Pastor Linda Bullenbach, and I've served at Mercy for 13 years, and or not 13, nine. Maybe it felt like 13, I don't know. But, and before that, in some congregations up in Wisconsin, and so I'm filling in for Pastor Gina, your interim pastor the next three weeks. So it's really good to be with you. Thank you for having me here. Lift up a couple announcements, but mostly I want to turn to you if you have announcements that you wish to lift up this morning. Um, and one is that I know there are new member classes, and I believe, and if I get this wrong, please correct me. I think it's Tuesday night from 6 to 8. And so keep that in mind if you know folks that are interested in coming to that. I believe there's also a stewardship campaign that is kicking off right now. Does anybody want to say more about that this morning? I believe there's an insert, and it gives you an opportunity to think about your gifts and talents and some of the areas of ministry you might be interested in using those gifts and talents in. So please take time to look at that and pray about that as well. Anything else that we need to lift up this morning? To, oh. yeah. yeah. Do you want the mic? I, I don't know. Can okay. You hear me? You uh, immediately after this service, I'm going to do a little demonstration to compare our old organ with this organ. And there's a very pretty in this organ. And So if you have some input, please come and tell me as soon as I can ask you any questions. Immediately after this service. So immediately after this service, if you you'd like to listen, there'll be a demonstration of the organ. Oh, thank you. Okay, new member orientation is not Tuesday night. It is Thursday night from 6 to 8, though, right? Yes. Yeah, from 6 to 8, Thursday night. Okay, any other announcements? Then our worship will begin. <coughs> Please rise. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Praise to you for the water of baptism and your word that saves us in this sacrament. Breathe your Holy Spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation illumine our days. Enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
a reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. reading from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should, should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world, world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words, that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. If there are any children, I ask that they please come forward at this time. So you have scary dreams. You know, when I was young, I loved ghost stories. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you any. But we used to sit, I lived right next to the church because my dad was a pastor, and so we lived in the house next door. So we would sit out in front of the church, and there was a really spooky-looking house across the street. Uh, we would sit out there with our friends, and the bats would be flying around, and we would make up scary stories and scare each other, and it was great fun. Well... Do you suppose that people in Jesus' day might have done the same thing? Do you think they ever made up scary stories to tell each other? What do you think? What do you, what do you think they did for fun? Because they're not scary. And, okay. okay. Well, I, you know what? You're just kind of bringing me to my next point. So I, my husband told me none of you would know who this is. He said that I'm going to date myself. But do any of you know who this is? What? You do? Oh, I wish he was here. He came last night. I'm going to, but uh, you guys will be my witnesses that you knew. Who is this? Jasper. Oh, Jasper. Casper. You were close. Cat. Well, Casper. Casper who? Casper. Oh, well, we used to call him. What we used to call him? Casper the friendly ghost. And so sometimes when we'd tell these scary stories to each other, we would calm our fears by thinking about Casper the friendly ghost. Was Casper the friendly ghost real? No, he was just made up, like the stories that we made up. Well, I think the disciples made up stories too sometimes, and they were scared. So when they saw Jesus show up where they were talking and where they were with each other, what did they feel? Were they afraid? Yeah. Yeah, what? Just one. What? What? One night, um, I was, oh. <laughs> I was um, in, my, in my mom's house. And yeah. I saw something strange in the backyard. Oh. Like in a black and white eyes where it wasn't ready to get out. And what? But then it was gone. So, th so sometimes we do see things or we think. We think of things that make us feel afraid, just like they did. But when Jesus came and was with them, you know what he said to them first of all? 
He said, peace be with you, because he didn't want them to be afraid. And then, to prove that he was not a ghost, now think really hard about that scripture I just read. What did Jesus do to help them know that he was real and he wasn't a ghost story? What did he do? What did he show them? What did he he do? His hands and feet. Why did he show his hands and feet? Yes, to know that that was really him. And, And then, just because they were still not quite sure, what did he do next? I'll give you a hint. Yeah? What did he do? What? You are so right. He died for us on the cross, and he rose again. And when he rose again, he came back to be with people, and he was real. Not like He was not like Casper, not like the friendly ghost that we make up, but he was very real, and they could see his hands and feet, and they could touch him, and he could eat, and he was real. And you know what? Jesus is real today, too. He's still with us. And even though we don't always see him with our eyes, we know he's with us because we feel him in our heart and we see his hands and feet. You know who his hands and feet are? You and me. We take care of each other with our hands and we go places with our feet and we work and we tell other people about Jesus. And so Jesus is still real, living among us. Let's, wow, that's cool. Okay, we better wrap up. Let's have a little prayer. Thank you so much for coming up this morning and for sharing in this time. God, we give you thanks for this special day. We thank you for all the people that we love who help us to know that you are so very real, and we pray you would help us to be your hands and feet. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. And thanks for knowing who Casper was. Whoops. Okay, I think it still works. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and sorry for your ears. Okay. Mary Rose Betton, a Catholic lay person and playwright, was directing a children's Easter play one year. And she was overseeing the casting to make sure that every single child got a role that they were comfortable with. But there was one little boy that was persistent. There was only one role he wanted. He wanted to be the stone that was in front of the tomb that was rolled away. And she tried so hard to encourage him. And she said, don't you want a speaking role? I can find you even a small speaking role. Nope, he was determined. He wanted to be the stone that was rolled away from the tomb. So finally she asked him, why do you want to be the stone? And he said, because it feels so good to let Jesus out of the tomb. Today we continue to celebrate with joy that Jesus was set free from the tomb. According to liturgical tradition, the third Sunday in Easter was often known as Jubilate Sunday or the Sunday of Joy. This is the encore day that was set aside for the church to allow itself to be surprised all over again by the joyous news of Jesus' resurrection. The gospel that I just read captures the joy of the disciples as Jesus appeared before them. Verse 40 says, Their joy was so great that they still could not believe it as they were dumbfounded. Remember that these are the same disciples who had been hiding out in fear and trepidation and feeling nothing but sorrow and apprehension about what was to come. But when they witnessed the risen Christ and finally realized that it was indeed him and not a ghost, but Christ himself risen in the flesh, their sorrow was turned to joy. Why? because suffering and death would not have the last word after all. 
Oh, death was real. The wounds were still clearly visible on Christ's hands and feet. But it was clear that through the resurrection, God could overcome even death with new life. And that was reason enough to rejoice. Not just a little, but so much that they were dumbfounded with joy. Have you ever been dumbfounded with joy? I can think of a few times that I have been, and one of the occasions that came to mind happened a few years ago when I was in parish ministry and I was doing an overnight retreat with a neighboring pastor called the 30-Hour Famine. Any of you familiar with that? It's, a, it's like a hunger simulation event for youth. And so um, it involves, you know, like a lot of youth retreats, sleeping on the church basement floor. Um, and so, you know, she and I were pretty smart, clever. We planned ahead. We got ourselves a couple air mattresses. Of course, we didn't tell the kids to get air mattresses. We didn't think of that. But, boy, we were feeling pretty smart at bedtime, laying out our, our air mattresses. And it wasn't long before air mattresses, our air mattresses started to do what air mattresses do, right? They started to leak. Slowly the air went out. And all of a sudden, we realized we weren't so clever after all. And, oh, my goodness, we got the giggles. All of a sudden, in the middle of this hungry event, we were both just dumbfounded with joy at the hilarity of the situation. And sometimes those things happen. And I think it's supposed to happen that way a lot more than it does when Christians gather with one another. Oh, there are occasions for grief and sorrow, and there are many reasons for concern, some that are going on in our world right now, and we do have to uphold those concerns and those cares with one another. Certainly, there are times for that, but there ought to also be more occasions as well for joy when we can be dumbfounded with joy. Sometimes we have to focus on concerns. But sometimes we simply have to rejoice in God's grace and God's sense of humor. And God must have a terrific sense of humor. I mean, think about it. God created giraffes and zebras and human beings. Sometimes we live out our faith with the wrong kind of seriousness. Oswald Chambers once said, We carry our religion as if it were a headache. There is neither joy or power nor inspiration in it, none of the grandeur of the unsearchable riches of Christ about it, none of the passion of hilarious confidence in God. I think that when the disciples witnessed the risen Christ standing before them, that is what overcame them, the passion of hilarious confidence in God. There was simply nothing left to fear because God had shown that absolutely everything was taken care of. There was nothing to understand except that God could be trusted in all matters, including the matters of life and death. When the disciples saw that Jesus was standing before them in the flesh, what else could they feel but joy? Joy dumbfounded them as they celebrated in the power of the resurrection. And there's something else about that power. That power was passed on to the disciples through the sending of the Holy Spirit. And it is with that power that we are also sent forth to be witnesses. The power to love, to forgive, and to heal one another. The first lesson this morning might seem a little confusing because it follows on the aftermath of a healing story. So we don't get to hear that part of the story, and yet it is one that is probably very familiar with a lot of us. This time it's not Jesus who is the healer, but it is the disciples because that power of the Holy Spirit has already come upon them, and now they have been sent out to do the work that Jesus did in the world. And they healed a man who was lame, a man who had been carried to the gate of the temple to beg every single day. See, he had people who cared deeply for him, enough to pick him up from his home every morning and carry him to a place where he could get some help because that was all that they could think of to do for them. 
And when the disciples saw him begging, they said, We don't have any money to give you, but we will give you what we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Then they helped him to stand up and walk. When others witnessed the effects of this healing, they came running. And Peter asked them why they were surprised, and that's when we come into the second lesson. Why are you surprised? And why were people looking at him and the disciples as if they had some special kind of power of their own? All of the power was the power of God sent to them through the Holy Spirit. It was the power of new life through the resurrection. The story is about much more than physical healing. It is about God's power at work in us, calling us to see new possibilities through the power of the resurrection. And sometimes those possibilities may be physical, but more often they are spiritual. And always they call us from death to new life. Sometimes we don't expect enough from God. Sometimes we just cannot see the possibilities. The people of Jerusalem who were close to this lame man could really only see one possibility for him, and that was to be placed in an area where he could beg. And so that's what they did for him every single day because they cared about him. But when the disciples saw him sitting there, they saw a new possibility that he might in fact walk again. The only reason they could see beyond the present reality for this man was because they had witnessed what was possible when the power of God came into play. They had witnessed the risen Christ, and they believed. And when they witnessed the power of God at work, they were dumbfounded with joy. I pray that we might have an opportunity to be dumbfounded with joy, perhaps even this day, perhaps every day, as we look at the world with new possibilities through the power of the resurrection. I pray we might see new possibilities for one another and for the church, so that as the body of Christ, we might witness to God's power, just as Christ did, through our flesh and bones, in a way that we reach out with love, forgiveness, and healing. May the Holy Spirit empower each one of us in our witness, and may that same Holy Spirit fill us with unbelievable joy. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. Holy God, we pray for the church and its many expressions. Strengthen the National Youth Gathering Planning Team. Prepare the hearts and minds of the youth and adults who will experience your love this summer. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Creating God, you gave us dominion over every living creature. Grant us wisdom to use our power to develop sustainable farming and housing practices. Slow down our rush to consume. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, walk with all refugees who leave their homes to move to safety. Protect them on their journey. Greet them with hospitality. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you heal us. For all who have not been granted the healing they desire, and for all who cannot access the care they need, send social workers, doctors, parish nurses, and other caregivers. Today we pray especially for Bob White, Kevin Ryan, David Dinwiddie, Robert Everett, and Ron Callan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our provider, you call us to give generously. Bless the finance and stewardship teams of this congregation. Make us joy joyful givers of time, talents, and treasures you have first given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our ancestors, in you we have our beginning and our end. We remember all the faithful departed. Enfold in a shield of peace those who mourn, especially the friends and family of Helen Wheatley. Hold them in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Thanks.
Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ. Do you, you can in? Always remember how much Jesus. 
Jesus loves you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Well, that was where the announcements were supposed to be. <laughs> Any further announcements? May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Guided by the gospel, we Alleluia, Christ is risen. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news.